There's a song that uh, Nancy Griffith does, which is called Power Line. Oh. What is it about your voice that triggers this song? I don't get it. It's weird because I can't hear it that well. When you when you do that, it's like hard, that. You would think that that's all I should be able. To, try it again. Turn. I'm turn holding it right on. up. I want to hear if I can hear that song. Just like me, they long to be close to you. <laughs> Hey, John, does this uh, photo behind me make me look a little devilish? No, it makes you look like you got horns. I know. <laughs> that's, that. that's all I'm going to be able to think about this whole show. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> okay, well, I'm sorry. What were you saying? I'm sure uh, it was important or you wouldn't say it. <laughs> no, it, there was, I've never said anything important on any one of these shows ever. I'm just here to make you look good. <laughs> <laughs> so hey how you been since uh three minutes ago pretty no, no, good no, we didn't ask that question in the last episode oh so i want to know since like what, two weeks ago two weeks ago yeah where where were you do you went to out of chicago didn't you yeah oh that's right yes that's right i went to yes. out of chicago you've been out of last. chicago good. really really good yeah, shooting really flowers good. i understand i was photograph. i didn't shoot any flowers but i did photograph some flowers <laughs> That was the, that was the event shooting. They flowers, don't like right? you shooting photos. <laughs> they don't like you shooting the flowers in the gardens. They kick you out. I was at, I was over at the elementary school shooting children. <laughs> That's awful. I know. And it? That's the, we might need to take that out. Sometimes I like to go to the zoo and shoot the animals. Isn't that funny that we say that? It's yeah. terrible. It's terrible. I've tried to remove that from my language. Hey uh today's show brooks jensen I don't, know, I, I don't think we've got enough time it's about time to wrap it up john sorry <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're done okay bye now <laughs> so uh brooks was recently talking about going to maine for the first time he'd never been and so he decided you know he's out in his winnebago or whatever he travels in now he, he sold his house and he just travels around which is great and uh, he's going to go to New England and, you know, and he's going to go fall foliage. And so his, his it was an interesting dialogue with himself, because unlike us, where we have each other, he talks to himself all the time. And, uh, you know, he was wondering, how am I going to show up in New England and make meaningful images? Hmm. And where is and this is and I know where you're going to go on this, but I'm hoping we can at least have a little bit of a dialogue on this one. Well, I'm not going to go to Maine in autumn. That's where you know I'm not going to go. Why wouldn't you though? <laughs> so, so I would probably yeah. avoid any fall color rush people, and I would go oh. at another time. That oh, wasn't okay. so. Proud. You would go to Maine. You're not going to go there because of all the people, right? Not yeah. during fall. Gosh, I would assume it's like the Rocky Mountains here, just crowded as can be. Maybe worse. Yeah, up in uh, Baja. But I'll be up. They got reds back there. We only have yellows out here, so I'll bet it's spectacular. Oh, it, well, and he talked about that. And recent photographers that I've been seeing, you know, because fall is coming up here. It's so true. It's I love going to Colorado where you live because it's so beautiful, but it's completely different than when we do like the Smoky Mountains workshop or oh, Acadia yeah. where we're heading to for back-to-back -back yeah. workshops. It's oranges and reds and yellows and greens. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really- We a rarely get a red, rarely. Yeah. yeah, you get oranges and stuff out there. Sometimes a deep yellow, yeah, yeah. But seriously, so how do you show up? Now, I know what your answer is going to be, and so do most of the people who have been watching. By the way, let's pause for a second and say hello to all those new listeners. I think that's seven, seven new people we from last week. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for signing up and listening. We hope you enjoy the show. So let's get on to something more meaningful. So how do you not make, you know, how do you show up? Let's say you were going to go to New England and you had seen, because you've seen, obviously, you know, there's reds and yellows. We just talked about that. So you've seen those. So how do you then show up in New England and not make those iconic derivative in images? Well, I mean, people who go, even here in the Rockies, they go to certain spots during yep. the autumn to get the color. So they've got a real preconceived idea of what they want. 
I got a problem with that just because they're going to shoot the same thing that they shot last year and the year before, and they're going to shoot the same thing that a million other people. We got the Maroon Bells here, and it's kind of like Zabriskie Point. People are all lined up taking the same shot. I just have a real problem with being another lemming on the hill. Uh, so how would I go? I would try to go with no preconceived ideas of what I'm looking for, because there is where the real surprise will come in, finding something that you didn't expect, something different than other people. I personally have a hard time shooting in trees. How, how do you feel about being inside forests and shooting with lots of trees? Oh, I love it. It's hard. Really? I mean, it's probably one of the most difficult types of photography that you can do because it's so overwhelming and chaotic. But boy, well, if you get fog, for instance, that separates mm. things and that mm. becomes a blast. You ever shoot the redwoods, for example? That's terribly hard for me. I mean, what do you do with it? It's just so tight. Well, you 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 look to separate things or you look to find symmetry or what have you. But back to back to on maybe more on point here, the question is really about how do you make meaningful images when you're going to iconic places? Um, and I think you've started to touch touch on it in, in the fact that you're still going to try to honor your vision, right? And so I'll respond a little bit. And I I I, I felt like I aligned with um, with Brooks a little bit. Rather than try to get rid of those iconic images or rather than go to Steptoe Butte, which is behind me in the image there, and try to find something, I'm going to go ahead and make those photographs. And, and I'm not going to feel bad about making an iconic photograph. I'm not going to feel bad about being taken by beauty, period, and falling in love with beauty or falling in love with whatever's in front of me, whether it be, and I'm not going to give mind or thought to whether it's iconic or not. Mm. Um, now, me, who is photo promiscuous, and I look at everybody else's images, the, I understand the concern that Brooks was talking about, that sometimes we can let that that vision of somebody else's get in the way of finding our own. And so I'll, I'll give you some more thoughts on that in a second uh, of how we move beyond that. Well, I'll just talk about it now. I, once I get those out of my system, much like Brooks talked about, then I can start to say, okay, done that. Now, now how can I express steptoe butte or fall foliage in a way that's uniquely mine? And that might be rather than a grand landscape, it might be a more intimate landscape. It might be a small scene as Sarah Marino does so well, or it might be abstract. Or one of my favorite parts of doing, let's go back to fall foliage that Dan helped me see so well was as fall is fading and you're almost at the end of it and you just have a few leaves dangling on the tree, that's another story and maybe even a more interesting story than a riot of color that's smack dab in your face, which is every postcard that's ever been made of fall foliage. So looking for deeper images. Well, Brooks also did another uh, podcast about the wow factor, you know, us trying to create every image that's a 10 that it goes wow and grabs you and wow. Yes. And it kind of maybe goes to our discussion, can every image be a 10? And sometimes that seems to be our goal. Yeah. They maybe ought to be more subtle, more simple, more uh, expressive, something that causes reflection. Uh, and you know, Brooks, we keep bringing him up. I got an idea. Why don't we just every week listen to his podcast and then comment on it? You know, that'd be great. Because we, we wouldn't have to come up with ideas. I know. That, I know. That would be really good. We could just take his ideas. I mean, we're doing one every four or five days and we're struggling to come up with new topics. He's doing one every day. It's unbelievable. Who do you think he's copying? Do you think he's got he somebody else he's watching problem. and he's just copying them? <laughs> probably some famous like artist right and coming up with these things but he does i love listening to brooks's stuff because they do get you thinking and i literally just listened to that one about how every image needs to be a banger and why is that and not for me they don't need to be bangers and i don't post all, all bangers and only bangers whatever the heck banger means right yeah, i don't know <laughs> but but it's so true so Anyway, so you know the 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 thought today was just to to talk about this idea of how do we make 
meaningful images when we're going to a location. And I think we're going to, you and I are going to fall out a little differently because I am promiscuous. I am going to go ahead and get rid of those images and shoot those images or capture those images. But as you know, when I go to a new location, I do not buy a guidebook and I do not look for the iconic spots. I don't want them. Those are the three things that you do. You do not drive. You do not book a hotel. No, you do drive. No, no, I, you don't book a I hotel. You look a hotel's about it. I get there and I book book. a hotel. Yeah. That's and so it's true. because, it, again, why do I want to do something everyone else is doing? Why do I want to be the 10,000th lemming sitting on the edge waiting for the maroon bells to be perfect? It, it just makes no sense to me. Yeah, and I don't well, see how that's personally expressive. And, I, and that's a term that, again, Brooks, or here we are, Brooks again, uh, uses. And I like that term. And I'm starting to use that rather than just saying I'm a fine art photographer. Uh, I'm a personally expressive photographer or something. I'm trying to work that out. Uh, Alistair Ben, his website's called Expressive Photography. Ah. You know, that he gets it. He understands that that's really what you and me and Chuck Kimberley's of the world and a Mitch De Browner and a Sarah Marino again. Um, I'd like to meet others, I can think day. of Alex Noriega comes to mind. You know, they're trying to make expressive imagery. And so maybe that maybe that's the bottom line of this show today is to think think about your work as rather than trying to to go with the preconceived idea. Just think about how can you be more expressive about what you're feeling about that moment that you're being taken by and and how do you how do you do that and let the viewer feel all of that and you're saying like, go ahead and shoot the iconics and get it out of your system for me it's I, yeah i have to I, i'm with brooks on that one i just got to do it because they're beautiful and they're wonderful and and that's why we've got iphones it's fun <laughs> Paste well, it on, post it on Facebook and get it out of your system. Yeah, well, I don't always post them, but sometimes I do. And I'm not ashamed of it. It's iconic for a reason. They're beautiful scenes. But I do want to dig a little deeper and I want to try to find something a little bit more meaningful. So, but, you know what, in our next show, let's continue this discussion a little bit. I loved when you showed your before and afters, and we got a lot of great feedback, as we said in our last show, about that. So I thought every once in a while we should maybe show some images. So in our next show, this is called a tease, by the way, Cole. This a is a tease. new technique I've learned about how to get YouTube engagement. I'm hoping we get up to 630 people because of this <laughs> technique. But if you tune into our next show, you'll see a little bit of my process in the Faroe Islands. Well, wait a minute. You're expecting people now to tune in because of that tease. <laughs> Do you have a better one? Yeah, we're going to have a nude photo of John in the next episode. A nude? Oh, yeah. It has to be a nude. I heard sex sells. That's what I heard. <laughs> All right. Talk to you soon. Merry uh, Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas. This show's not going to go until sometime around Christmas. And my family tells me that the day after Halloween, it's Christmas music. And I'm, I said, I'm out of the house. I'm done. I'm out. Hey, I'm already tired of pumpkin spice. You can't go to a Walmart now without pumpkin spice everywhere. That's right. <laughs> okay, right. let's kill this one. <laughs>